Hello everybody, I'm going to teach you about geosynchronous satellites today and how they apply to uniform motion. Motion, motion. I really love the word geosynchronous because it's made up of two little words that I understand. Even though if it's one big word you don't get, you can often break it down into two small parts. So the first part is the word geo and the second part is the word synchronous. So you probably know what a geo means. No, no, not that kind of geo. Like, ah, yes, this kind of geo. It's like the earth in science, geology usually, um, or, or like geophysics, so we're talking about Earth. And then synchronous, it's like synchronous swimmers. They're moving at the same time. So the word geosynchronous is Earth, same time. Earth, same time, satellites is what we're talking about today. And the thing that's the same time about these satellites is the idea that they always have the same position above the surface of the Earth no matter where the Earth is, no matter what time of day it is or the day of the year, they're in the same spot in the sky that you look up, which is handy when you want to beam information to those satellites and have it come back to you. They're also at the same height all the time, and most of the th time you're going to be asked what that height is in these questions. And the most important thing I could probably tell you about them today is that all geosynchronous satellites have a period of 24 hours, and that's what we're going to use to solve this problem. So determine the height from the surface of the Earth of a geosynchronous satellite. And so here's my little diagram. Um, I've got my satellite, I've got my Earth, and I'm looking for this height. Okay, and so I'm going to call that H. Now, let's think of what's happening here. This thing is moving in a circle, which means we're going to have a centripetal force. So I'll start by writing down FC. And I tell my students in class, the centripetal force is always supplied by something. It, it has to be equal to some other force. And in this case, the force that keeps the satellite going in a circle around an object is the force of gravity. So I'm saying Fc equals Fg. Now I'm going to substitute something in for each of these two quantities. In place of Fc, I could substitute in the physics formula for the centripetal force. Uh, 4 pi squared rm over t squared. And the reason I'm using this formula, and not the other one you might be familiar with, mv squared over r for centripetal force, is because this one has period. And I want period because I know what the period is. It's 24 hours. And for force of gravity, I'm going to put in g m1 m2 over r squared. And uh, you might be thinking, well, how come you're not using this formula? The little easy one. Well, that's because force equals mass times acceleration due to gravity only works on Earth's surface. Uh, it won't work out here in outer space when the field strength, the G, is in exactly 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Okay, from here, it's really just kind of a plug and chug scenario, as long as you remember what I said on that last slide. We're looking for the value of R. Um, you have to remember that the period is going to be 24 hours. Now, we can do a couple of things to make this formula a little easier to solve here. Um, we can cancel out a mass on either side. The mass we're canceling out is the mass of the satellite at this point, okay? It's the mass of the satellite. The mass of the satellite doesn't determine anything about the radius or the speed or anything else, the period of the satellite. So that is gone. And now what I'm left with here is 4 pi squared, so I rewrote that, r, that's what I'm solving for, over t squared. Now t is going to be 24 hours. I don't want it in hours, so I'm going to times it by 60 seconds, uh, or rather minutes, I guess, first, to make it into seconds, um, uh, and then times it by, sorry, times it by 60 to make it into minutes, times it by 60 again to make it into seconds. So I'll square that, and that's equal to the universal gravitational constant, Newton meters squared per kilogram squared, and uh, times mass. Now this is the mass of the Earth. Uh, 5.97 times 10 to the 24, I hope that fit in there, kilograms. And um, there's my other R. Now you're kind of thinking here, oh geez, I got two R's. How am I going to solve for this? Well, it's not too bad actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by R squared, okay, like that. And what I'm going to end up getting here is r cubed. On this side, the r's cancel out. Okay, And now that r squared times the r that I had there is r cubed. So now I can pull up my calculator and I can type it all through. 
And as I'm typing, my student teacher, Ms. Dearden, is going to go and grab a formula sheet and check to make sure the math of the Earth actually is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. I'm pretty sure it is. And I mean, I'm a pretty awesome physicist, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so I'm going to start entering this in. I think I'm going to do the right-hand side first. 6.67 to the negative 11 times 5.97 to the 24. I'm going to divide that by, let's see, oh no, I'm going to times it, I think, by what I've got down here. Yes, I'm right, that is the mass of the Earth. Oh, what a great feeling. 24 times 60 times 60 squared. And uh, I'll figure out what that is. Okay, good. So now I've worked out the right-hand side. I've multiplied it by the denominator on the left. And I'm going to divide that by 4 times pi squared. And so what I've got here is what r cubed is. r cubed is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the 22. So now I need to cubed root that to get r by itself. So r is going to be about 4.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4.2 times 10 to the 7 meters. Now we're almost done. We're almost done. What we have is r. We have from the center of the Earth to the center of the satellite. We actually didn't want that. We want what the height is. So to find the height, last quick step, we're going to take our radius, the total distance, 4.2 times 10 to the 7 meters, and we're going to subtract the radius of the Earth, which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. And the height that we get is the height that we're looking for here. So minus 6.37 times 10 to the 6. This geosynchronous satellite, along with all the others, is going to be up there at, uh, let's go to two sig digs, 3.6 times 10 to the 7 meters. So there you go. Did you get that? I hope you did. Uh, and for more information about geosynchronous satellites, please check out my website, ldindustries.ca.